We're here today to talk about a modern beehive, the components of that hive, and how to locate that hive on your property. The first thing I look for in a beehive location is a south-facing exposure. I want that morning sun to warm that beehive up to have those bees become active. I then look for an area that has a, a south-facing exposure but then has some afternoon shade. So tucked in back into a tree, uh, those beehives need to stay cool in the late afternoon on a hot July and August day or the bees will overheat. What I also look for is level ground. I look for ground that isn't gonna flood. The reason I say level ground, I'm, I'm looking at a beehive that by midsummer could weigh several hundred pounds and it all starts with a secure and stable base. This base needs to, to, again, be level. It provides an area that the bees can land on and walk up into the hive. From there, we look at, at having two deep hive bodies. These hive bodies, number one and number two, will be where all of the brood is produced. The queen will lay eggs, the workers will tend to those eggs that will develop into future worker bees. So this is where all of the bee reproduction occurs. This beehive, these deeps have frames and you will start off with raw foundation. Over time, those bees, those workers will extract out wax and make the comb that you think of as honeycomb in these areas. Once you have these two deeps and the bees are growing and the population is growing, they will begin to forage for nectar. And they'll turn that nectar into honey. And that's what we have up here. We have a honey super that again, looks a lot like those deep hive bodies. They're just a little smaller, mainly because it weighs a lot. Honey is quite dense, it's quite heavy. And so we have manageable frames. And again, this is one with raw foundation that the bees will have to extract and draw out the comb. What we do is we place a queen excluder in between our hive body and our super. This queen excluder is sized just perfectly to allow the worker bees through carrying the nectar up into the super, but it doesn't allow the queen who's a little larger to go up in and start to lay eggs. We want to keep her in these two deep hive bodies. Now over time, you will have to, and in some cases, on a week to 10 day basis, add more honey supers. When that population reaches its peak of 30 to 40, maybe even 50,000 bees, you're going to have to give them space. You're going to have to provide them with more honey supers. You also need to provide a vent in the middle of summer so that air can flow and you're going to need to keep out the elements so a sealed top uh, normally a tin lid will be all you need for a modern beehive so we have a stable base we have two deep hives and then we have our supers and that's what makes a modern beehive today We're here today to talk about how to buy equipment and how to buy bees. I often get questions from new beekeepers about buying new versus used equipment. I would encourage you to buy brand new equipment. It limits the amount of disease that you will have to fight in the first few years of your beekeeping experience. So anything to make yourself or your life easier as a beekeeper, you should do. So new equipment 